So as I continue to investigate why the Model 1 keyboard doesn't want to run at a 5.32 MHz, one of the tools at my disposal is being able to use one of the additional ROM banks and the little ROM daughter card uh, I put together in a previous video to actually put some diagnostic software into. And so I've jumped into uh, Notepad++ here and written a little bit of Z80 assembly language code that I'll compile through TASM. Uh, code here is pretty straightforward. Prefer the comments to line up. Uh, standard equates we don't even use. The command for fast is decimal 12 or 0 a hex. Do I have that right? No, I don't. 12. Yes, okay. That's still 8, 9a. Wow. Okay. So when I started talking about it, we caught the first bug. So, uh, yeah, 12 decimal is 8 plus 4. So, yeah. Uh, slow, we would output uh, the command just 0, 0. The port that we send the command to is port 254 or FE hex. Go ahead and set the stack at the top of the 16K of RAM. Remember that the RAM is from 16 to 32K as that address space. Origin of the program is going to be address 0000. The uh, Z80 upon a reset starts execution at address 0000. And a little bitty test program here. We just go ahead and set a stack pointer at the top of physical RAM, even though we're not use, going to use the stack at this point. We load A with the fast command. We output it to the command port. We should now be running at uh, 5.32 megahertz in await states. Load A with a 00 to clear it. Load HL with the first byte of video RAM, that address. Go ahead and write A to that position. Load HL with a memory address up near the top of RAM. Load that byte with uh, the value of A. Read that byte back into C. Point at the second byte in video RAM. Go ahead and put whatever value was read back there in there. And increment A. And we just sit here and loop. And A just increments and increments and increments. So what we'll see with these two commands here, so these commands here will be, uh, these commands will be executing against the uh, actual physical DRAM. So it'll, it'll do a write and then a read to the DRAM. These commands here are talking to video RAM and these two lines here are talking to video RAM. So we have our little program here. Let's go ahead and build it. It's been built. We can jump in and load the list file that was just created. And we can see here the hex bytes. So these are the bytes I'll need to load into uh, one of those little uh, ROM banks in, in my flash ROM adapter. And I'll do a couple of things. Uh, I'll put this in twice, but in the second copy, I'll make this byte here 00. And then if I select that bank, we're running normal speed. If I select the bank this code's in, we'll be running at high speed. And then we can dive in with the uh, logic analyzer in the oscilloscope and see if we can spot a difference. So I've gone ahead and added some comments in our little assembly language program to show the uh, memory map of the flash memory device. I don't know if you remember, if you look at the previous video on, on the little daughter board, I don't have the code for version 1.0 or 1.1 of the level 2 basic. I do have the ROM for version 1.2 and 1.3 at these addresses. I've got level 1 basic here and I've got my little Shadow Twan tweaked basic starting here and there's a bad block in the flash memory device starting at 1C00. So what I'm going to do is load the slow and fast test code. Uh, that I wrote into these bottom two memory blocks. So let's go ahead. The file is loaded here and I've confirmed that in the file we have what we want. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load. And we need to get to the TASM folder where I did the work. It's in here. And it's sprinter1.bin. And we're going to load it at address 0. We'll take the first 20 hex bytes we need to disable clear buffer or it will wipe the rest of the device out with F's. We talked about this before. And we'll load that. 
from address. Oh. It'd help if I did it this way as well. Go ahead and load those. And then I want to load that same file, the bin file, to buffer address. In this case, it'll be 04000. First address out of the file, and we only need the first 20 bytes again as well. Hopefully, uh, the we didn't just clear other stuff out. Let's uh, go ahead and edit the file. And we wanted the slow code. Actually, we wanted slow here. So we need to change. Actually, let me compile this again quick. I didn't compile it and reload the list file. It'll be a little easier if I do that. Go back to the list file and load it. Now, okay, you know, it's got my updated comments in it. So slow code at bank zero, and that means the byte at four. So it should be a three E zero zero. In that case, that'll put that bank in low speed. And scroll down to the next bank, and it should be loaded at four thousand hex. And it will have the three E zero C. That's correct. Let's make sure the level two basic is still here, and it is. Sweet. Let's do a file. No, I don't need to reload that. Save buffer. And I'm going to call it uh, masterdebug.rom. And we'll save the entire buffer out. And I should now have the images loaded that I wanted. So let's go ahead and program the flash device I'm gonna to have to play around I've got some two megabyte uh, flash devices as well and I may have to tweak my little board slightly to deal with the extra address pin anyhow it looks like that programmed so let's go try it in the system so I've got the flash device we just programmed back on the daughter board and it's plugged down into the system the switches are still set for the uh, version 1.2 of level 2 basic. Let's make sure that'll come up. I can get the camera to hold here. Which it says memory size, so it does. Let's check the version 1.3 basic. We should now see the yeah, mem size and RS. So if I set the switches here to bank zero so all the switches are on on means hooking them to ground so we are in the first bank of the device hopefully what we'll get here is the system will come up and in the first two bytes of the video memory up here we should see characters flashing so we, we certainly do and it looks like to me they're pretty consistent. We didn't initialize the video memory, so we just got garbage in it. But that's acting as I wanted it to. So this should be writing a byte in DRAM, displaying it in that first character what the byte was, reading it back in the second byte, and it's just sitting there looping over and over and over. Uh, get the camera to hold a little bit better. So we can get an idea of the speed here, kind of through the hash pattern in the screen. Let's see what happens if we select the bank that's supposedly toggling us to high speed. Uh, the hash pattern on the screen is definitely different. So my next step here is going to be to pull a scope out and start looking at signals in the system and comparing the two and see if we can figure out why we can't get a full 5.32 megahertz zero weight state out of the system. So stay tuned. So I'm clipped onto the Z80 with this little uh, clip-on adapter. Very handy. I've had this forever. Uh, it works very well. The ground pin is being tapped off here to this little header. It just provides a series of ground pins. And the scope probe is on pin 6, which is the Z80 clock. If we come back and look at the scope and the computer, assuming I can get this to 
lock into place without you can see that uh, I don't know if you can read it rotate the screen a bit square here if I can get it to rotate a little bit square uh, we're measuring a clock of 5.3132 right in there megahertz so we know we're on high speed we can see the two characters back up here high doing their thing we are on a ROM set or bank one if I switch back to bank zero we show the clock at 1.772 megahertz so we know the board's actually doing its thing and my little assembly code is actually changing speed so the next thing I'll do here is just fish around look at some signals so it looks like that coupling might be on AC the coupling is on AC uh, DC coupling And of course expand it out here still getting used to the the Roden Schwartz scope I have to say it's a very nice instrument uh, so anyhow at least we know the code is changing the clocks so I've got the logic probe hooked up you can see the mess there and it's an interesting capture at this point that we'll take a look at here of course, this assumes I can get the, uh, once again, the camera to hold position. So, uh, let me find a pointer. There's my orange marker. So, the system started right here. The first op code we execute is the 3-1 where we load the stack at address 7F FF so there's the stack gets loaded let me scroll this across here a bit oops wrong control and then we hit the instruction 3E and 0C so 3E where'd it go 3E and then 0C and what that does is that loads A with the value 0C which is what we're going to output oh god I'm going to grab the wrong knob apparently every time here so we've got the 0C in the A register that's what we out want to output on the port FE to kick us into high speed mode there's the D3 which is the uh, out command And what we'll see here, although it's not super obvious until I scroll a little further, is you'll notice that we've gone from, notice the widths of the idle times here, the FFs, this suddenly becomes compressed way down as we make the transition into uh, the faster clock rate. So you can see the 1.77 megahertz clock rate, and at the... Uh, D3FE command, D3FE. So right here is where the hardware makes the change over to the faster clock rate. And now we're seeing the system operating at the faster clock rate. And the next command then is going to be a 3E00, which is a load A with 00. And then there should be a 21003C. And we have the 21003C. Uh, that loaded the HL with 3C00 and then we should have a 77 and the 77 is where we wrote value in A to the first byte in the video memory then we should have a 4E coming along here there's the 77 Oh, no, we should have a 21. I got ahead of myself. So there's the 77 where we actually wrote the byte. And then we have a 21. There should be a 21003C, 2100. Where's the 3C? 2100. Oh, no, 210070. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. 210070. That again loads the HL an address up near the top of RAM 
and there should be another 77 which is right here which writes that byte to the top of RAM Let's scroll over here a little further so we've got the 77 where we wrote the byte to the top of RAM then we should encounter a 4E which loads the C register back from the address in HL we should have read, read back and it's probably this right here is the zero zero we should have read back and you can see there there's some interesting artifacting that's the first DRAM read right there and that's rather interesting looking what I've currently got displayed here is the data bus and then the data bus again down below uh, I'm not sure why I'm showing the data bus twice but I am Let's expand that out a bit. So the uh, 4E is where we read data back into the processor and we expect to read a zero. And the question is, I don't have the actual read strobe here brought out to look at to see what the actual edge the read is happening on but it's happening someplace in there after the 4e we should find a 21 and there it is 013c 21 there's the 01 there's the 3c now uh, loaded the, or loaded the hl with a 3c01 which is the second byte in video memory and then there's a 71 and that 71 writes that byte we just read out of RAM back to the second byte in video memory and then we should hit a 18 why don't I see the return there there's the 71 there should be a 3c there's the 3c okay 3C, which is increment A, and there should be an 18 F0, there's the 18, and the F0, and that's the relative jump back to uh, address, uh, where did I jump back to actually, jump back to loop, should be back to address 9 hex, and we should find there a 21003C. So there's the 21, the 0, 0, the 3C, and we're back into the loop now. So that, lo loaded, that, load, uh, that loaded HL with the 3C00. Zero, zero. Then we do a 77, which uh, writes that 77 to the first byte in video memory. And the cycle continues. So we can see we've got a fairly good capture of the data bus. Uh, there's only a few things I'm seeing. I really need to uh, display the address bus here rather than the data bus. Uh, Turn data zero off. I need to get to uh, the other logic channel on off, and I want to take the selected data channel and I want to move it up. Why isn't it actually? Oh, it didn't do a capture when I ran the capture. Let me rerun a capture. Let's see what good, how, how good timing I got there. So what we're seeing up above is A0 through A7. Uh, the top trace is A0. I'm sure there's a better way to slide this. We cut the scale down and scroll that way. So there's the start. C 
So we can see here where the processor reset, the lower eight address bits are all zeros. It did a read from the ROM and got the 31 hex. It moved on to address one. So this, so this was a load SP stat, so with an FF and then a 7F at address 2, and then address 3. We should find a 3E, and we do. Address 4. We should find a uh, 0C, and we have 00100, which is address 4. seeing anything that would give me a hint why this isn't working. We have an interesting little so zero zero one. That's an interesting point right there 21003C so this is at address 9 it's not looking like address 9 to me oh yeah it is right there address 9 Interesting little noise envelope right there, and there's where we pick up address 10, 8 and 2 is 10. And we've got that interesting little glitch right there. Let's bring it over here towards center. Blow it up and take a look at that. FB7860. It's just kind of random garbage. Uh, probably the bus settling down, uh, either moving into tri-state. Probably the yeah, the bus being released, released maybe to tri-state and then being pulled down, or had been pulled up and bring brought back brought back to life. Either way, and there's a nice little glitch there. However. You know, if we dig deep enough, we will find those kind of noise windows on all these transitions where the bus is undefined. It's in, it's in transition, so uh, it's nothing to really worry about. Potentially, let's the time base back down. Well, for just a quick round of looking at things, seeing the machine start up. So that's an interesting the address D. Should find a 21 at address D. But I don't understand the noise right there. That address pin just kind of bopped around. Again, not knowing where the memory read memory write strobes are happening. I'm hoping they're somewhat centered up in here. I may have to go in and uh, look at some different signals on maybe some of these upper pins here as we start to tear this down. But there's just a quick look at using the logic analyzer, uh, starting to get an idea of what's going on in the machine and verifying that it matches what I expect it to here in our little uh, list file from the code we wrote. So I spent a fair amount of time poking around, looking at various signals, uh, playing with the uh, logic analyzer and the scope, and, and the bottom line of all that basically comes down to this. Uh, the DRAMs that I have in that Model 1 are 200 nanosecond DRAMs. They're really not fast enough. I don't know how many wait states that the Sprinter card is adding. Uh, 
if you don't know a wait state, basically is a way of waiting for slow memory. So the Z80 will try to fetch a byte from memory, and then wait states will get inserted, and the processor basically pauses there until the wait states are completed, then finishes the read. That way the slow memory can catch up. And you can have one wait state, two, three, four, uh, as much as eight, and maybe even more. I say so I don't know what the Sprinter card is doing for wait states. I know that they do get enabled on it. I'm guessing if there was one more wait state, uh, we'd be able to run it at 5.32 megahertz solidly. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I don't have any faster uh, 16K DRAMs. Uh, the fastest I've got are those 200 nanosecond parts I've got. Uh, you know, to run a Z80 flat out at 4 megahertz typically requires 150 nanosecond or faster parts, and that's at 4 nanosec or at, at 4 megahertz. So, you know, getting these higher processor speeds with these speeds of RAM and ROM are always going to require wait states. Uh, rather than go in and try some of the other stuff that was in the Sprinter manual about, you know, adding resistors to get signals pu pulled low, lower, or quicker. There was a lot of little things people were doing, you know, to make things work a little bit quicker. I'm not going to do any of that. I don't see a need for it. Uh, I could potentially go in and move the VCC power rail around and maybe lower it a bit and actually get a little more solid performance out of the system. Maybe not. But at this point, I'm just going to basically say, you know, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I can overclock the machine. It works pretty well. Uh, the MIRE, you know, the basics of it are working pretty well with it. We saw that in the previous video. Uh, talking with Peter, the designer of the MRE, about it, one of the things he said is he, he doesn't know if the RS-232 and other ports on the MR or, or not the MIRE, the, or, yeah, the MIRE, sorry, I'm stumbling on words. He doesn't know if the serial uh, port and other, and other you know, peripherals he's built on that device would actually keep up with the higher speed or not. And I'm not really going to go in and test them. Uh, <clears throat> you, you know, it was an experiment to see what would and wouldn't happen. Again, that MIRE is a wonderful piece of hardware. Very impressed with it. Apologies for the dog barking in the backyard. You know, we've seen the Sprinter do its job. Uh, I can overclock solidly at 2.66 megahertz. Uh, and the system runs really well, and that's about a 50% you know gain in speed, which, which isn't bad. Uh, you know, I'm happy with the mod. I'm happy with what we've got there. So... I'm going to end this video here rather than bore you with the additional video I shot as I poked around and looked at things. Uh, if there's interest, I could come back and do a video where we actually, you know, you know, did, did a tight loop, kind of like we were doing there in ROM. Anna, shush, barking dog. We could, uh, you know, maybe do a tighter loop and bring into the, the, the video, you know, the memory read, the memory write, some of the other control signals that the processor generates. Uh, and kind of look at the timing of those. Uh, if there's interest in that, let me know, and, and maybe we'll set something up to do that. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope maybe you learned something. I always do creating these, and we'll talk soon. Bye.